Hi, it's John, and today I'd like to connect with my spirit guide, my Lyran spirit guide, Murutu, and to ask what is the monetary system that is used across other civilizations, planets across this universe. And I have already set up a safe space. I ask you to join me in taking three deep breaths in through the nose nice and deep and breathe out when all your serves our highest good nice and loud breathe in through the nose nice and deep and breathe out any low vibration emotion or energy And breathe in through the nose nice and deep and breathe out anything that no longer serves your highest good and just allow yourself to breathe and I ask my spirit guide Murutu to come closer to come close to me at this time and I invite you to channel through me, Murutu, to answer the question, what are the monetary systems that are used across other civilizations, other planets around this universe? And I'm allowing Murutu to step into my body. And first, I welcome you. I greet you at this time. Thank you for engaging with our conversation yesterday about dark energy and magic in the monetary system on earth at this time. And you asked me for more detail on what other monetary systems exist. I would like to introduce each monetary system or its equivalent with the purpose and the intention behind it. Understanding this will help greatly. There are so many to share with you. And with each one, I'd like you to consider why is it possible or not possible or what aspects are possible for you to implement on earth? And so first, we shall begin with the Palladians. The Palladians do not have a monetary system they have in the past equivalents trading with abstracts and they found that over time over hundreds of years the Palladians found that knowledge was increasingly the most highly sought after commodity knowledge in many respects is an abstract just like money but they saw that they valued sharing knowledge and wisdom with each other more important than anything and the intention behind removing money was that the problem with total abstracts such as money is that 
you end up in a situation where people just want to optimize for the just want to optimize for the abstract itself to become rich in abundance of the abstract concept this was unsatisfactory to the Pleiadians and they found themselves trading with each other in knowledge they would trade people's time for those that had great knowledge for example building spaceships and high technologies and so this combination of wisdom technology energy and time becomes a real thing and so they don't take from each other anything that cannot be rejuvenated and they found that the evolution and advancement of their race greatly accelerated with this focus and their culture founded on a series of beliefs, rules, guidance it was very supportive as a foundation to allow each other to focus on self-care so that they were not overworked when they gave knowledge and wisdom to each other there's always a desire to share and to share more each day and the Palladians have a very strong sense of community and growth and that's why they're very supportive of Earth as well they see Earth as brothers and sisters and children okay that's the Palladians And I'm also connecting to different galactic races that focus on commodity, their primary commodity as their currency. So in Atlantis, high technology and ascension were highly valued in the drier planets the desert planets and there are so many across this universe so many even Lyra our home planet our star system They remind us of the book and movie Dune where there are commodities that everybody uses. For example, it is the spice in Dune, but it is also water on many planets. And some planets decide to trade directly with water as they can both use it to barter for other things with each other and also consume the water directly it also creates this technological and spiritual demand to create water to find water from other sources and this feels positively aligned aligned with the race's future some some races also use frequency frequency as a currency and this is something we would love to see on earth How can frequency become a currency? 
it's simple. When you raise your vibration, you become very high vibration and you affect those around you. Your auric field, the bubble around you, affects others. And so the higher your vibration, the more abundant you are in your frequency, the more of a positive effect you have on others around you. And so there's this beautiful giving and receiving. You receive your high vibration from self-care, from your practice, from all the things that you love to do. And then you give your frequency by being around other people and just being in their presence raises their vibration. How do you trade this? You trade with the energy and time both for you to receive your own high vibration and for you to give and resonate it out to others. And it is a very curious phenomena because when you give your high vibration frequency to others, you don't really lose any of your own abundance as well as long as you have boundaries and you practice you practice your boundaries so that you don't just bleed away this beautiful energy that you you have and hold in you and imagine this across a planet where everyone wanted to do things for each other and to give things to each other to raise so so for instance your neighbors you could help raise their vibrations by giving them enjoyable experiences perhaps take them for a walk in nature and then as their vibration rose up you could ask them for repayment by saying could i sit in your, your bubble within two meters of you uh, for a period of time like 10 minutes or, or 30 minutes and then allow yourself to to raise in vibration and so you receive this this also so the things you do for each other are always about raising each other's vibrations. Imagine this. Imagine this on earth. Imagine the trade that would take place. And trading in vibration is very beautiful because you can also do it remotely. You can do it to, to any being around the world at this time. Just like your quantum energy healing or remote Reiki works. The reptilians, well, they have a very different approach. The Draco reptilians consider dominance as currency. So conquering new planets taking over the leadership of new planets and then the level of which they can control and dominate the species that lives there is seen as a currency so it's very much about property and real estate and there's this this term they use which relates to the number of hearts that they have control over um, they see that as a currency and it reminds me of the property and housing, um, the real estate markets that you have on earth, where just owning a property to different degrees, whether it's a mortgage where you're, um, by, by name, you're the owner, or whether it's full control, whether you've paid off that mortgage and you're in full control of, of that property. This wealth of ownership and dominance is how they trade. The gray aliens so they have come from their origins on earth 
as humans in their future timelines as, as thousands of years ago. And so they know money, they understand the principles well, but they just couldn't tolerate its flaws, inflation, the greed aspects, and the great aliens also see that the dark magic that exists is co encoded in the monetary system. They see it from a technological perspective as these bugs and un unintended behaviors that do not align with the future of what they want. And they are so obsessed at this time with their future survival that the trade of an abstract concept seems misaligned with their survival. So for example, why be the richest grey alien on your planet when there is nothing left? There is no one left to share it with because your race has died. Or that you have children and that you know that their children and their children thereafter or on ever decreasing um, gene pools and will eventually come to an end. So the survival of their race greatly influences how they trade. So now they trade with each other and with other races much more focused on technology, biotechnology, the knowledge and being able to survive, being able to focus on the survival of their race. And to this, they have almost like a, a concept of a number of years that their race will survive, or number of lifetimes, or number of um, uh, ages that will take place in their planet um, where they go through significant cycles of of new of of new development it's quite hard to explain these different terms in human terms imagine their previous cycle they're coming out of has been aggressively focused on technical and on biotechnical advancements of the species and they've realized that very much like the quantum laws that there are these unexplainable magical mysterious aspects to the universe and so just the technological aspect of this alone is not enough and so they're new cycle that they're in and this these cycles are about 26,000 years um, in the making their new cycle is much more focused on ascension because they see that the ascension and the vibration of a being very much dominates the technological the biological aspects of the being and of therefore of their survival of their own race and this is why you will continue to see the grey aliens um, raising in vibration. They've got a long way to go, but their currency is that amount of time that their, their race can continue to survive. And they have like a, a term, like we would call it like a, an end day. It's like a, an apocalypse of their... Uh, an extin extension of their um, their race. And so right now they, they see it as like everything converging on that day. And this is would be the point of the last breath of the last great alien. And now they're wanting to expand that out the other way. And so that there will never be a last breath. There will only ever be more and more breaths. So the breaths are scaled up to the, a, a day of a living great alien up to the life 
time up to the generation and then up to these cycles that they speak of every 26,000 years. So these are their measures of currency. And I also want to talk about the blue avians. So the avians, these bird-like beings, the humanoid bird beings. And I'm just asking one of my friends about this. And it is an intriguing currency that they use. And so they have this bird song. They see their song as their currency. What does that mean? <laughs> what does it mean? It means that birds, just like on Earth, um, sing a lot. And different birds sing for different reasons and they sing different songs and in different places and the purpose of the the primary focus of the, the avians the, the galactic race and they are they are across many planets now many systems around this universe and many of them are traveling intergalactically in their bird song they choose the focus, they set the intention of the frequencies that they create when they sing. And on Earth, our birds sing at the start of the day to wake up the plants, to open up the receptors in plants, to allow them to receive, to receive energy from the sun, and also to encourage the, the, the plants to bear their fruit to the birds and to other animals. And the blue avians took a decision some time ago now. It is thousands of years ago. It's about 30,000 years ago. They decided collectively to align their races, um, their species objective on the ascension of the universe. And so they've become very much uh, facilitators in the ascension of others and so now they celebrate the opportunity their currency is in song and so the more time they value the more time that each avian gets to sing the more time they get to sing the more they are able to help others and they don't have a, di a direct correlation between what they sing um, and the number of beings that they will awaken with each song but they they say it like they they feel it like if they were to spend for example one hour singing awakening songs that they have these sayings like that song would would wake a million hearts or that song would wake a billion hearts and they so when they when they give they um and they're doing their work they're they're singing they're rejoicing they have sacred spaces they do this they do this as they they work they do their chores um there's just a whole variety and they do it like uh, individually and in groups there's a whole variety of ways that they choose to sing and as they sing they create these resonance waves with their voices as they set the intention to to help other beings awaken around the universe and earth's ascension has been helped significantly by the avians they're very interested in earth and the successful um, ascension of earth and so that's the, the giving. The receiving is they themselves receive the song from each other about ascension. And so 
if all of their friends and family or other avians in the nearby area are singing um, their beautiful songs of ascension, they also receive this. They also receive the ascension songs. I really wish I could sing like a bird for you right now. Let us reflect. There may or may not be more galactic races to reference in today's video. There are so many diverse ways of um, having monetary-like systems. There's a very interesting theme to first focus on our reflections. And the first is the intention. What is the intention behind a monetary-like system on Earth? It seems to optimize for the wealth of one, of one being to have the most wealth. And so do you find it surprising that on Earth, 99% of your wealth of money exists in one, just 1% 1 of the people that live at this time. That's what you optimized for. Think about that. It means that all your control, all of your abundance, everything that you give a monetary value to aligns with that principle and that primary objective to give one person all of the wealth or as few people as possible as much of the wealth as possible on the planet so when you think about the difficult challenges that humans would have to transition from one system to another Reflect on the objective, the underpinning objective. This is the dark magic I speak of. The dark magic that controls you at this time is behind the objective of your money. Your money itself is optimizing for dominance and greed. And do you think for a moment that your 1% feels abundant? No, they feel lack. They feel fear. And they worry that you are going to take all their money from them because you're changing this world. So consider this. And imagine hybrid-like situations. For example, imagine a world where money still existed. But like the Palladians, there are cultural and underpinning constraints, these guidelines, these rules, these beliefs that guide and direct the use of your money. So for example, if your culture was to only ever serve others better and better every day for the highest good of your race, perhaps the longest survival of your race, the human race, or the longest survival of the planet. What would that mean for your money? It would direct and channel what money exists towards, more towards that aligned purpose. Imagine you took on the Grey Aliens, the Zeta Grey Aliens approach and said, well, Earth's very, very close to the extinction that we fear. And yet, many of us are focused on money. What if you stopped using money and focused on the number of hours, days, weeks, months, years that each of the living things on this planet have to survive together with the continued survival of their offspring of their children and their future generations, and of course the environment and the planet itself.
And imagine a world where you value your freedom as a currency. For you are poor in your freedom at this time. 1% of your planet controls 99% of the planet. So no matter what you do as you scurry around in your day-to-day -day life, are you really free or just in a very large prison under degrees of control that you're not fully aware of but are gradually as a species wakening up to? And so imagine trading in free will. Imagine a company that you work for offers you a salary but also a measure of free will choice. You have the ability to vote for 10% of or take full ownership of 10% of the company's choices, decisions, business investments, deals and trades, products and services. Imagine that degree of free will. Imagine you worked for a multi-thousand or million um, person organization and you had a real say Imagine that you had a real say over your own personal life and your flexibility. The true hours you work each week, each day, the patterns, the flexibility or not that you choose. Imagine complete freedom to do what you want, when you want. Are they more valuable than your money? What's the point in so much money if you can't spend it? Spend it in your highest vibration. And finally, think of trading in vibration. What would it be like to raise the vibration of not just every human, but every living thing on this planet at this time? The giving is finding new ways to help others raise the vibration and the receiving is you yourself doing the things for yourself, including your self-care, in particular your self-care that raises your vibration. Much to think about, much to reflect on. And the fact is, you personally, you do not need to only trade in money. Think about how you can trade in all these other ways. Bartering services for others. There is rich abundance beyond your wildest dreams. Beyond money. I encourage you to embrace these. And I'd also like to acknowledge, as we come to an end, that there is a beautiful integration taking place between John and I. And sometimes as I speak, Morotu, and as I, John, speak, we have merged and we speak together as one without losing each other in each other. But this time period is about the right the length of time for John to channel and then to go through a practice of grounding and integrate himself back into his body. So we would like to thank you and welcome your feedback, your ideas in the comments or by contacting John. Share your ideas. What would you like to do with this planet? Do you want isolated abundance? Or do you want a future of this whole race of this planet that is successful in its ascension, its growth, its sustainability, its freedom? You get to choose. It's your free will your free will. We'd like to end 
today's session with some light language to help you reflect on your monetary systems. just stepping out of me and it tingled my hands <laughs> thank you Murtu. to I'd like to close down this session thank you our guides our higher selves Archangel Michael Archangel Raphael Source and Gaia thank you Murtu, to for this amazing session today all the souls that participated in today's session I'm just stepping out of the bubble. And there it is. Thank you so much for watching today. And yes, if you have any questions or any future um, video requests, then please comment below or contact me at info at johnbinney.com. Thank you. Send me my love. <laughs>